So while the theme of these programs is always what's next and thinking about the future, we are going to kick off this morning by talking for a minute about the present, about what's right in front of us. This rapidly spreading virus with potentially significant, massively significant, both economic and public health consequences. To give us the very latest on this outbreak, we are very fortunate to have the administration's top doctor join us by phone. Ambassador Deborah Burks is a world-renowned global health official and physician. She has decades of experience dealing with diseases, their vaccines, and interagency responses to health challenges. She was the government's leading, um, what's the word I'm looking for? She was leading the response on HIV and AIDS at the State Department when President Trump called her to help coordinate the whole of government response to the coronavirus. So needless to say, she's a little busy right now. We're very grateful that she's sharing her time with us. She's going to give a few minutes of comments and then I'll ask her a question or two, but please welcome Dr. Deborah Burks. Doctor? Good morning. Good morning, it's just a privilege to join you by telephone and Frank, a very big privilege to be here in the White House and to be working directly for Vice President Pence. He has been extraordinary in really setting the tone of respect for others and service to others. And it's, it's been really refreshing to be here and bring the small amount of talent that I have to a very expert team. It's also a real privilege to talk to you all um, and knowing your work and your cutting edge approach and you bring next innovations, always incredibly key. So just a brief update on where we are. In the majority of the country, they are still in full containment mode. And what do I mean by that? I mean, in most of the country, they're dealing with imported cases, either from South Korea, Iran, or Italy. And because of the president's action, been able to really both identify and ensure containment of those cases. In a few areas of the country, which I think you all know well, the outbreak that's in um, Washington State, California, New York, and potentially Florida, those are dealing with what we call community spread, and that's where the large numbers of increases are coming from. Um, we have focused what we call mitigation efforts into those communities by flooding the communities with the access to testing so they can really identify who's infected, and then ensuring comprehensive care and treatment for those who are infected. Just in our analysis of all the global data, which should be somewhat reassuring to your community and your employees, is it breaks down a little bit like flu, um, and it's acting in very much in spread like flu. Unlike flu, it looks like younger people, particularly people under 30, may have mild or very mild flu-like symptoms or potentially even be asymptomatic. In all of the countries that we have looked at their data in a comprehensive way, no child under 10 has succumbed to this illness and only one individual under 20. So it's a different pattern than flu, which sometimes, as you know, the current flu epidemic that we have at present has um, caused death in a, in a number of children. On the other end of the spectrum, People who are older, and particularly people with pre-existing conditions, um, serious pre-existing conditions, we're not talking about hypertension. Um, we're talking about serious, what we would call cardiac or kidney disease or severe diabetes that is not well controlled, severe obesity. Those kind of conditions have made people more successful more susceptible to a worse outcome. So if you've noticed over the last week, the vice president has been very much focused in getting the message out to how we protect the elderly. We're hoping to send a document on to you all today that really shows what every American can do since most Americans are in areas where there is not active transmission. What most Americans can do in their families, in their schools, in their workplace, and in commercial establishments in order to keep everyone safe. Really focused on how do we protect the elderly. 
In discussion about the elderly, we know that the particular area of susceptibility are elderly that are cared for together in long-term care facilities. We know from the cruise ships that the, the most common transmission appears to be from healthy crew that may have very low symptoms to their passengers where the median age is 74. So we think that may also have happened in long care, care facilities. So over the last <clears throat> excuse me week, the vice president has directed us um, and CMS to really focus on new guidelines to um, long-term care facilities, and those have gone out. And in the same time, increasing our inspection of those facilities focused very much on what we would call infection control really ensuring that the elderly among us are protected because they are the most vulnerable. So in some ways, it's acting like a severe flu um, with those complications of pneumonia and potentially even death in the people who are older or pre-existing conditions and acting more like a mild flu. Or we do believe that there could even be people with so mild cases, particularly with other viruses, circulating at this time that they don't even notice that they could be infected. So that's everything that we know. The numbers will continue to grow as we can do testing and less and less symptomatic individuals. Um, and that's going to be absolutely critical to divide, define the extent of spread in these four cluster areas. And we're focused very much on preventing expansion in areas that have these imported cases that are from Iran, South Korea or Italy. So I'm going to stop there because I know your time is precious and you have great brains in the room. And I think the discussion that you will have over the day, I'm going to have our team here continue to check back in with you to see if we can provide additional information, but also to hear your thoughts. Uh, thank you so much for those helpful comments. Let me ask you uh, two quick questions before you get back to your important work. One is, how do we avoid either guardrail of panic or complacency. You know, help us understand the right posture for business leaders right now. That is an excellent question, and it is part of the reason reason why we put out um, pretty straightforward guidance. And it's just a four-slide presentation um, that can be adapted, sent out to every business that talks about very practical things that can happen in the workplace. What do we mean by that? Moving to the elbow bump or any greeting that doesn't revolve physical contact. And I'm sure you're practicing that right now in that room. Anything that I know this sounds a little technical, but any, any areas that could come in contact, particularly with saliva. What do I mean? Utensils, workplace lunchrooms, refrigerator knobs. All of those things, we're asking people to be more active in disinfecting to protect each other. Um, so there's a whole series of very straightforward guidelines. I think that would be very helpful for every workplace to have because it shows that the employers are concerned about every single one of their employees. It also includes guidelines that the employees can take home, particularly for multi-generational households. So I think distributing those four pages throughout your your um, group and your different workplaces and ensuring that it gets to every employer. I think it's just incredibly helpful, straightforward items that one can show how concerned you are for your employees, also providing safe establishments for, for consumers, and then some really helpful tips for people at home, including people who have these multi-generational households. Thank you so much. I saw those four slides on Twitter this morning, and we can make sure that link gets to all of these attendees this morning. In a, this question sounds like it's the same, but I mean it to be a little bit different. So if the first question was, you know, how do we avoid panic or complacency and just play it right down the middle uh, to keep the economy going, but also make sure we're doing what we can to help stop the spread, that's kind of my second question business leaders, people running small businesses, large businesses, or chambers across the country, what role can they play in mitigating the spread? 
I think your first question and second question are brilliant and really go together. So thank you for those well thought out questions. I think really what's exciting to me personally, I come out of a, a disease that is a pandemic globally. And what has really helped us is transparent c communication. So what prevents panic is people really understanding the situation. And that's why I keep coming back to those four slides, because when an employer posts them, it says, I'm I'm concerned about you in the workplace, but I'm also concerned about your children at school, and I'm concerned about um, you at home. And let's work together to um, both decrease panic, because these are things that we can do today. And I think anytime you give people things that they can do today to ensure their future health. It's incredibly helpful. And then I think, you know how we have those, um, particularly for commercial establishments, posting that you're compliant with these guidelines, saying to your consumer, this is what we're doing proactively to protect you. You know how we have those things posted that give in eating places um, health scores. Every business could convert this, and you would be the perfect group to take this on, could convert this to a score or a post that could go up in every window that says, this is what I am doing within this establishment to keep you protected from everything from disinfecting the doorknobs to decreasing um, money exchange, moving much more to the credit. I mean, fortunately, we're set up to do very much more credit card work and without the actual um, it, it, the person behind the counter utilizing that credit card. It's very much the individual buying the items using their own devices and credit cards. These things that decrease exchange of any contact services is terrific. And I think being able to say that we're concerned about you, our consumer, at the same time we're protecting our own employees, I think is just the perfect message. And the more information we can get out and posted signs on the door, you know, those food establishment health hygiene scores gave people a lot of reassurance, figuring out um, from you all how to convert those four-page documents into something that can be displayed on every window, I think would be very reassuring to the American people. Of course, you would have to actually do the disinfecting elements that are in there, and you would have to ensure your employees are well is in home. But that comprehensive approach, I think, is very reassuring to Americans. Well, listen, two, two quick things as we let you get back to your important job. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for what you're doing. Second, you can count on the people in this room as business leaders to do what they can to keep the economic impact as low as possible, and as community leaders to keep the spread as low as possible. So you can count on us, and we're very appreciative of your time this morning, the work you're doing for our country, and, and just God bless you, Dr. Burks. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. I'm going to, you know, as always, I'm going to have an ask. Um, you all are brilliant because you know how to reach messaging, messaging to consumers. You have a lot and you personally have PR talent. Um, when you look at our messaging, if you can figure out, and we'll send you that right now, um, if you could figure out how we make it more interesting, more exciting, more age appropriate market segmentation. You all know how to do that. I know in the right on you all to tell us how to speak to a 15 year old different from a 25 year old different from a 65 year old. And that's the talent that you bring to us. So as you look at things, um, feel free to give us feedback. You have connections to our group here and we're excited about your understanding and your wisdom and what you'll bring to us. You're very kind. Thank you again. Okay. Bye.